what's going on my dear friends today in this video let's learn and master the angular frameworks latest version so let's get started Alright guys, in this lecture let's talk about another important form validation type which is max length validation. So imagine this scenario, we have a form where a user is supposed to enter their full name. Now what if someone tries to enter an excessively long name with hundreds of characters? It's not a good practice, right? And guys, we have to avoid that. So guys, for this we can use the max length validation in Angular. So with this max length, we can limit the number of characters the user can enter into a specific input field. Uh, now, let's see how to implement this. First go to the input field where we want to apply this validation. For example, let's take the same full name field. To set the maximum character limit, simply add the max length attribute to the input field and specify the limit. So set the limit to around 10 characters. Uh, this is uh, the same as previous min length validation, right? So guys, next let's make sure the user gets some feedback if they exceed the character limit. Just like with the min length, we can display an error message when the max length validation fails. For this also guys, we have to use the errors attribute, same like previous. So simply duplicate this if block again and change this error type to max length, all lowercase letters. Now inside this change the error message to something like name cannot be more than 10 characters long. That's it. So guys now save this file and go to the browser. Try typing in the name input field. As you guys can see here, if we enter more than 10 characters, this max length error message appears. So guys when we exceeded the given max length characters count, the max length error property will return true. So that's how we got this error message. So guys, this is the beauty of angular form validations. So guys, remember setting a max length validation is not only ensures cleaner input, but also improves user experience by preventing long unwanted entries that might break the layout or cause other issues like break down the database. So these validations are really super useful when we deal with real world applications. Perfect. Alright guys, now let's quickly see how we can add validation to this email field. So guys, for this also first we can use the required validation. So this email input also cannot be empty. So how do we do that? Same like previous. So first thing first, add the ng model directive to this input field. So instead of this email input field, add the ng model. So next guys, keep this in your mind. In order to work this ng model, we must add the name attribute. So set the name attribute and add the name email. So next at last don't forget to bind this ng model to a template variable. So create a template variable something uh, email. So we define template variables using hashtag right. So after this uh, bind this ng model to this template variable. So guys these are the basic requirements of an angular template driven form input. Alright, so next first let's add the required validation. This is also same like previous. So let's copy and paste this if block. And change this template variable name to email. So this time we are dealing with this email input, right? Alright, so next change this required error message to email is required. Um, let's remove this min length and max length errors we don't need that to this input uh, that's it save this all and go to the browser click on this email input field and click outside of it as you guys can see here we are getting this required error and guys if you look at this in the initial load we are getting this red border on this email field we didn't add anything to get this red border then how do we get this can you guys tell me so guys, if we look at this HTML code inside the browser, so you guys can see here that Angular has added these classes to this email input field, same like the previous name input field, right? 
so if you can remember that we write the CSS style to this ng invalid class right so this is how we are getting this red border on this email field so but here we have a problem which is this border red color style is applied in the initial load so to prevent this we can use the class pointing right so same approach like previous so what I'm going to do here is I will simply copy and paste this class binding from the previous name input to this email input. Now change this template variable to email. That's it. So now save this and go to the browser. As you guys can see here, now we are not getting this red border at the initial loading. Perfect. All right, guys, uh, next uh, let's add the email validation to this. So sometimes users can submit this form without typing a valid email address. So we have to prevent that, right? For this guys, we have to use the pattern validation attribute in HTML. So first simply add the pattern attribute inside this and next guys, we have to pass the pattern of this email. So guys, simply the email will be something like this. First some characters, then add symbol, then again followed by some characters and after this the domain extension dot com dot org or dot io and so on so for this we have to build the pattern of this email right so guys uh, for this we'll no need to write this from scratch we can simply get the email pattern from the internet so simply google it and go to the w3 school website inside this find the email pattern just simply copy this and paste it inside the pattern attribute that's it now guys next uh, we have to add the error message for this so inside this if block again add another if block and the condition is uh, so guys like previous main length error in order to capture this pattern error we have to use the has error method so simply add that here the template variable name and the has error method and pass the error type to the method as the parameter so this time we are checking the pattern validation right so pass it here inside quotes so this will execute this if condition if this return true simple right so now inside this add the error message let's copy and paste the error message and change this message to invalid email address. That's it. So save this all and go to the browser. Click on this email input and click outside. As you guys can see here, we got this required error message. So now type something. Now we are getting this invalid email error. Uh, now type an invalid email. As you guys can see here, as soon as I type an valid email, the invalid email error disappeared from the view. Cool, right? So guys, this is how we deal with the email validation using the pattern attribute. Hope you guys got the idea. Perfect. Alright guys, now let's quickly look at how to add the validation to the address field. Uh, wait guys, simply we will add uh, the text area for this address so remove this and remove this input and add the text area so simply add text area opening and closing tags now set this add the placeholder address so next add the name attribute set the name as address uh, next in order to do the validation we have to add the ng model directive right so same like previous simply add the ng model Next, assign this to a template variable, add a template variable, hashtag address, and next bind this to the ng model directive. Perfect. So guys, now for this address text area also required. So add the required attribute. Next, guys, let's simply add the error message for this. Um, let's copy and paste the previous error message. If block. We don't need this pattern error for this all we're going to check here is the required validation so next change the template variable name to address and next change the error message to 
address is required. That's it. So save this and go to the browser. Click on this address text area and click away. As you guys can see here, this printed the address required error. But guys in here, we are not getting the red border on this text area. Why is that? So if you look at the code inside this text area, also we have the ng invalid class, but we are not getting the red border like other inputs. Why is that? If you guys can remember, we added this red border on the input field that has this ng invalid. So this style will only apply to the input fields. So in order to apply the red border on the text area, we have to define this again to the text area. So let's do this inside the CSS file at this. This time we're gonna add this to the text area. So text area dot ng invalid. Now inside this simply add the border color, same like the previous. So copy and paste it here. That's it. So save this and go to the browser. Now we are getting this error. So this is loaded in the initial load. So now we are getting this red border on this text area and guys, this is loaded in the initial load. So to prevent that, simply copy and paste the class binding here and change these template variables to address. That's it. So now this is working as we expected. Cool, right? So guys, this is how we deal with validations with text area input. Hope you guys got the idea. Alright well, guys, I think now you guys have a clear picture about how to deal with validations in this template driven form approach. So let's move on to the next topic. So guys, in this lecture, let's learn how to submit the form and capture the values from the input fields. So we have already done something similar earlier when we working with angular forms and with the form group class hope you guys remember so back then we used the default submit event binding to submit this form which works fine for submitting forms in general however in angular we have a more specific directive for form submission called ng submit so from now on we'll use ng submit to handle form submission in angular so using ng submit is quite simple, very similar to the default form submission. The only difference here is that ng submit give us more control over the form state and values. To submit this form, we bind the ng submit event to the method called on submit. So we'll use the same approach like previous in here, just simply change this binding submit to ng submit, right? Uh, so guys in here when the form is submitted we pass the form template variable to the on submit method so in order to capture the form values we have to pass this ng form new instance to the typescript file right uh, so guys now inside the component file we have this form submit method where we capture the form data by logging the form parameter to the browser console so we did this in the previous lecture, right? So let's test this out. So go back to the browser and fill this form. Hit the submit button. Once you check the browser console, you will see that the form object is logged just like with ng model. It contains various properties such as whether the form is valid or invalid, dirty or pristine, etc. So if you look at uh, this carefully you can see that this form group have this value property if you expand the value property you'll see that actual data you typed into the input field full name email and address formatted as an object and stored inside this value property so with this data we can now access the form values and use them however we want such as sending the data to the database or api endpoints for saving uh, wait, let's log only this value property so you guys can see this clearly. Inside this, just simply add dot values after this parameter variable. That's it. So save this all and go to the browser. Now again, fill this form and submit. As you guys can see here, this time we got only the values object with the 
data you entered. From here, we can easily process or save this form data in the database. Perfect, right? Alright, so guys, this is how we deal with form submission in Angular template driven forms. So, hope you guys all got the idea. Alright guys, in the previous section, we learned how to submit a form and retrieve the form values. But there is a small problem. If I submit the form without filling any fields, it still allows the submission even we added the validation for each and every input field that are in this form. When we check the console, we can notice that all the values for the fields are empty. So passing an empty data through the form isn't a good practice, right? So to fix this, we can disable the submit button when the form is incomplete or invalid. So it's very simple. So guys, in order to do this, we can use the property binding approach in Angular, right? So let's see this in action. So inside the submit button, simply add the property binding for this disabled property. So how do we add the property binding? For this, we'll use square brackets, right? So inside this, add the square brackets. Inside that, add the property disabled. So guys, next, the condition for this, guys, we can use this invalid property of this ng form. So inside this, for this, uh, use the forms template variable, which is this f after this dot invalid. So guys, simply this invalid property will return true when this form is invalid, right? Alright, so that's it. Save everything and go to the browser. As you guys can see, the submit button is now disabled. So we can't submit the form just yet. So now fill out the form. And you'll notice that once the form is filled correctly, the submit button becomes active. If I change any of the input field to make them invalid, the button gets disabled again. So this is the beauty of the ng form directive. So it ensures that we can't submit invalid form data to the database. Beautiful, right? So guys, this is how we disable the submit button in this template driven form approach. So hope you guys all got the idea.